of former President Donald Trump walking into thunderous applause at the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee with his ear bandaged. He appeared to be a little emotional during the surprise appearance, which is also the first time Americans have seen him since the assassination attempt against him just two days earlier. Wow, what a moment. You're watching a special two-hour edition of Fox & Friends First here on a Tuesday morning. I'm Todd Pyro. A moment indeed. I'm Carly Shimkus. This is also the very first time the former president appeared with his vice presidential pick, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance. And now we are gearing up for day two with the theme, Make America Safe Once Again. Brooke Sigmund is live in Milwaukee with all the details. Good morning, Brooke. Hey, good morning from Milwaukee, guys. Yeah, Todd Carley, it was an emotional first day at the Republican National Convention here. Tens of thousands of attendees warmly welcomed former President Trump, cheering him on less than two days after he was nearly assassinated. Trump was formally nominated as the 2024 Republican nominee earlier in the day. He was joined on stage Monday night by his VP pick, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance. Trump announcing the choice on his truth social, saying, quote, as Vice President J.D. will continue to fight Fight for our Constitution, stand with our troops, and will do everything he can to help me make America great again. Vance spoke with Sean Hannity last night about his history with President Trump. Watch this. I was certainly skeptical of Donald Trump in 2016, but President Trump was a great president and he changed my mind. I think he changed the minds of a lot of Americans because, again, he delivered that peace and prosperity. President Trump did a really good job. And I actually think it's a good thing when you see somebody, you were wrong about him, you ought to admit the mistake and admit that you were wrong. I have the vision and the agenda aligned with President Trump to make the American worker better off, to bring peace to the world, and to actually advance an agenda that's good for American citizens. Meanwhile, President Biden is slamming Trump's newly selected running mate. He's a clone of Trump on the issues. A clone of Trump on the issues. So I don't see any difference. Yeah, so several speakers took the stage on day one of the convention, including model and entrepreneur Amber Rose. The truth is that the media has lied to us about Donald Trump. I know this because for a long time I believed those lies. My entire family is racially diverse. And I believed the left-wing propaganda that Donald Trump was a racist. My father said, no, he's not, Amber. What are you talking about? And when I insisted, he said, prove it. So to prove my father wrong, I did my research and looked into all things Donald Trump. People have to do their research. Yeah, we also heard from everyday Americans who also shared their experience living under a Biden presidency. I left Nicaragua for a better life in a fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. In 2022, my three boys and I face a devastating house fire. Starting over in Joe Biden's economy was almost impossible. I just worry about getting through the day. The big boy Joe inflation has turned our dollars into nickels. I asked my father which party I should join. He said that we're Hispanics, we vote Democrat. But the more I learned, the more I saw that the Democratic Party didn't represent my values. Republicans did. Meanwhile, Vice President Kamala Harris reached out to Vance after he was nominated as Trump's VP pick. Harris congratulated him, welcomed him to the race, and said she hopes that they can debate on CBS News in the coming weeks. Harris has already agreed to a VP debate on either July 23rd or August 13th, so we will see uh, which she agrees to if either. What nice. a moment in history we are all living through. Brooke, thank you so much. So now we turn our attention to Senator J.D. Vance. The question is, who really is Trump's new running mate? The 39-year-old father of three, father of four rather, was first elected to the Senate back in 2022. He is a venture capitalist, lawyer, and Marine veteran. In 2016, he was a Trump critic, but eventually became a staunch ally and now supports the former president's populist brand. Vance is also the author of the best-selling memoir turned Netflix movie hillbilly elegy which details his life growing up as a poor kid in rural kentucky and ohio senator vance was raised by his grandparents after his mom became addicted to opioids he joined the marines straight out of high school and eventually went on to graduate from yale law school he also spoke with our very own sean hannity about the moment he got that phone call 
When the president called me today to actually formally offer me to become, you know, the vice presidential nominee, which just sounds crazy. Um, my son, my seven-year-old son, was sort of making noise in the background. You know, I'm getting so embarrassed. It's like, oh my God, Donald Trump's asking me to be his vice president. So the but then he actually has me put my seven-year-old son on the phone. You think about this, everything that's happened, the guy just got shot at a couple of days ago and he takes the time to talk to my seven-year-old. It's a moment I'll never forget. Is the world more peaceful than it was four years ago? Remember when Donald Trump left office, you had real growing peace movements all over the world. And three years later, it seems like we have a conflict in every corner of the world, and Americans are poor, Sean. Uh, you know a little about my background. I grew up in a poor family. I think it's very simple. Number one, you need to support the president in enacting the agenda, whether it's going and meeting with foreign leaders, whether it's working with the Senate and the House to get legislation passed. The president can't be everywhere. Even Donald Trump can't be everywhere. So you've got to be a person he can trust, he can rely on to actually advance the agenda. That's the most important job. Of course, if something, God forbid, happens, you got to be ready to step into that, that office. That's one of the most important roles of the vice president. But I think Donald Trump, very healthy, going to serve for four very good years. With that, let us bring in former assistant secretary of state for President George W. Bush, Robert Charles. Robert, as a student of history like you are, how do you put into context what our nation has seen over the course of the last 72 hours culminating with Donald Trump and J.D. Vance on that stage together as the Republican ticket? You know, it's it's really been a shocking turn of events, uh, you know, both of you. I, I, I look at it and I think this is really morning in America. We're we're witnessing a whole bunch of things telescoped into one uh, very short period of time. It almost feels like Ronald Reagan is now running with the young Theodore Roosevelt or the young John F. Kennedy. An extraordinary, first of all, shift of uh, obviously uh, generational shift in terms of his vice president. But gosh, where do you begin? You know, George Washington, Theodore Roosevelt, uh, Ronald Reagan, all survived uh, assassination attempts, and from that, from those various assassination attempts, went on and did unbelievable things. It changed them. It changed the country around them. And now Trump has selected J.D. Vance. Gosh, this guy is just a, a walking storybook. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. He came from nothing. Uh, he has done exceptionally well in terms of being a writer, uh, a military, a marine. Uh, did his did his turn in in Iraq. Came back. Uh, has made a lot of money. Ran for the Senate. It is sort of a you know, he walks the walk and he talks the talk. So, you know, I am ecstatic. To me, it feels very much like the 1980 era. It feels, I mean, he, interestingly, J.D. Vance was born about two weeks before the Republican convention in 1984. Uh, and that was the year in which Ronald Reagan uh, swept 49 states. So there's something really inspirational about both Donald Trump and how he courageously reacted to that assassination attempt. And then putting them get together with a, a young, dynamic uh, sort of can do young uh, American. I, I think it's inspirational. And the Trump campaign is, of course, speaking out about what ultimately led to Donald Trump selecting J.D. Vance as his running mate. And one of the things that has come up is uh, J.D. Vance's military experience. Listen to this. He has served his country in the Marine Corps. He enlisted in the Marine Corps right after the Twin Towers came down. He has, of course, realized, as many in that generation of global war on terror veterans have, that America shouldn't be in endless foreign wars that don't serve its interests. He's completely aligned with President Trump's ambition to make this country wealthy, safe, strong again. And his military experience, Robert, is one of the reasons why he opposes foreign wars. He's, he's one of the senators that's really led the opposition to foreign aid to Ukraine, more money to Ukraine. How do you feel about that? You know, again, I'm going to go back to Theodore Roosevelt because, you know, again, I'm just doing this spur of the moment. But the reality is, in 1898, Theodore Roosevelt uh, stormed San Juan Hill, for which he later posthumously got uh, the uh, Medal of Honor. And yet, he became the author of uh, of the, um, the the Nobel Peace Prize because he 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 helped stop the Sino uh, the Sino Russian War. And so, you know, at the end of the day, I think you have to say that if you've seen war, and Eisenhower was one of the first people to say this, if you've seen it up 
up close and personal, you don't want to see it happen again. And you certainly don't want to see the American Treasury drained. You don't want to see American boots on the ground right now in Ukraine. That would be useless. It would be fraught. Uh, it has There's no, no purpose in it. So at the end of the day, I think there's a certain uh, common sense that comes with uh, J.D. Vance. He's young. He's 39. Uh, it's extraordinary that he has done what he's done in his life. But I think Donald Trump probably saw that and said, you know what, this is a guy that uh, puts his money where his mouth is, has done what he said he would do, and, and came from nothing and has turned it into something. So, you know, if this is the American dream we're looking for, and every American should be looking for the American dream, I think uh, the combination of Donald Trump and J.D. Vance give you a pretty good script for the American dream. That was day one. Boy, there was a lot to day one today, day two. And the theme is make America safe once again. Robert, is today the day that Republicans win back that suburban female voter in a swing state who may have, over the course of the last couple of elections, been fear-mongered into voting Democratic because of the fear-mongering on the issue of abortion, but now takes a look at the world around her and says, I'm turning back to the Republican Party because I am scared for the safety of of my family. Gosh, you know, I mean, honestly, Todd, that's that's as about as good a summary as you can get uh, uh, for what's really afoot here. Since Donald Trump left office and Joe's, uh, Joe Biden assumed office, we've seen this radical increase in drug addiction and drug-related crime. We've seen crime generally rising. We've seen violent crime rising. We've seen threats to kids. We've seen threats to them in the schoolhouse. We've seen really a, an attack in many ways on the core values of a family. So as a parent myself, I will tell you that, uh, and I think women, or as you know, men and women both who are parents uh, feel strongly that their kids are the future. That's where you invest your entire life. And uh, you know, if Donald Trump and J.D. Vance can make this place a better, safer, uh, more open uh, place for American kids, by God, yes. I mean, I think they'll vote for him. You know, when I was young and my mother was a school teacher, we were allowed to run around outside and just be home for dinner. And you know, that that era, it would be great to see something like that come back again because America misses that era. We miss the sense that we can trust where we live to be a safe place. So God bless them, and I hope they can deliver. And tomorrow's theme is Make America Strong once again, all culminating to Thursday, which is Make America Great once again. Robert, thank you so much for joining That's us. Probably. Have a great day yourself. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.